Hi, and welcome to PhD Career Stories. Uh, this is Tina Persson, and I have the honor today to have a guest, uh, and that is Sarah Anderson from Stockholm. And she is a talent advisor and a recruiter. But before that, she was a PhD student, and she realized that she didn't really like the lab work <laughs> because she's a PhD in pharmaceutical science, so she has spent many, many hours in the lab. But she came to a point when she realized that hmm, being in the lab might not be my thing for the future. So hang on in this podcast here because she's going to share with you, dear followers, what really happened. But before that, I, as you might hear here from Tina, <laughs> I have recently come back from Berlin and Vienna and I catch the cold. So if I sound a little bit different <laughs> from as usual, it is because I have a very thick throat and a very thick nose at the moment. But I hope I'm going to survive here together with Sarah's energy. So welcome, Sarah, to the podcast here. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, I'm Very happy nice to have you because you. I know you are sitting in the office at Empire because yes. you work at the recruitment company Empire Science and Technology. Yeah. So could you just give a background on what is Empire doing? What what is what kind of company is that? Well, uh, Empire uh, Science Tech is a recruitment and consulting company in uh, life science and technology mm. uh, area. Mm. And uh, we are based in, in Uppsala, Stockholm and Gothenburg. And in Gothenburg, they are more focused on technology. And here in Uppsala and Stockholm, we are more focused on, on life science and especially the pharmaceutical and biotechnology area, I'd say. You have a PhD as a talent advisor and recruiter. Do your colleagues also have a PhD in the office? Yes, yeah, yeah, many. Uh, of us actually do both uh, uh, talent advisors uh, and also uh, also uh, yeah all, all employees or uh, we would like to call ourselves employees so with an employees em employees with the employees. Em employees empire <laughs> yeah so many many do have a phd uh, as well also being out on, on different assignments and and so mm -hmm. uh, and we have it was also uh, from the start we the aim was to build this very niche and specialized life science uh, company so it's just been uh, um, um, yeah because of that having a phd is of course uh, yeah it's, it's uh, an advantage it's an advantage in the job you have because I guess you're going to meet a lot of PhDs that apply for the position that you evaluate. So what would you say is the difference? In what way do you understand PhDs better than people or recruiters not having a PhD? What would you say? Mm, I'd say, first of all, uh, I, I understand the, the industry. I've uh, been working with also, in, in during my PhD, I was very... Uh, I collaborated a lot with the, the pharmaceutical industry in Sweden and also in, in Europe. So I got a, a feeling and understanding of the, the life science industry, especially when it comes to, to research and, and, and science, but also knowing what it takes to perform a PhD and, mm. and, and do, do the years and all the hurdles and what you really get to learn not only within your field but you get so much more out of it you are a project leader often and you are self-going but you also have to team up with other people you don't mm. usually have anyone to ask you just have to figure it out on your own so a lot of problem solving around that and then of course uh, getting very specialized in a field and competent in that. So, yeah, I feel I have a good understanding of, of 
the full picture of a PhD, because what you say a PhD is much more than just being very specialized in a field. But that's that's many times how PhDs feel. They are very specialized and forget that you have, because what you mentioned here is some important transferable skills, you know, self-leadership, leadership, project management, time management, many of these things PhDs are very good at. It's just that we need to emphasize them. Yeah. But do you know what? I like to pull that back because one thing I believe that you understand very well that is when PhDs come to you and they say you know I'm not really sure what I want but I have a feeling of I shouldn't stay in the lab mm -hmm. uh, because I know you were in that situation because we have talked before the yes. podcast here <laughs> yeah yes. so so you said and I'm super interested in that because many of my clients when I coach them they can't really define because what I do is you can be practical be super interested in being in the lab but you can be extremely creative more administrative enterprising very supportive in your nature. So I want you just to go back to that specific moment or moments yeah. when you realized, okay, it's fine to be in the lab here. This mm -hmm. is my PhD here, really. Mm -hmm. But what feeling was that connected to that you found out that lab is not really my thing? Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a good question, Tina. And I try to, to look back and I think it's probably been several different times and well, not not so much a time but more of an understanding and just it has to land somewhere then it's just okay but i from the start um i i think we don't really know so much about ourselves and what we we like we have an interest for for a, a subject or an area and that's interesting and uh, I never really knew how, how will I feel uh, in the lab sitting there? What does it really mean? And I, I know for myself, I'm a creative person. I, I love to meet people. So, and the lab can sometimes be very, you are sitting there on your own, uh, minding your own business, and then you're <laughs> yeah. analyzing, uh, analyzing the data and that might be in front of your computer and that might take some some time as well so i realized that it can be quite lonely from time to time and a bit boring to me always interesting but boring so here is like it's a conflict because you know that you are doing something that is important and and you have a passion for the the, the field and the subject but it's just over time you start to feel that this can be right i'm so <laughs> bored and i don't really get to use my skills and and everything that i have in me that i can use to to, to feel uh, that I, i'm kind of living my my full potential and uh, and having fun in everything that i i do so it it started somewhere there and then from there i did a lot of um, self development I, I would say like digging into what did what, you get any help in that self-development did you read books or listen yeah, to podcasts yeah I, did, I, I didn't get any help really from perhaps the university I had to to take help uh, a little bit uh, outside but I did I did read books I did listen to podcasts I did go to different events and meet up with people that had um perhaps my background but had done something different afterwards and i felt yeah very uh, interested by hearing their story and, and learning more and, and trying to to figure out for myself what what will my future be and i think it's also i i try to explain because it's like a side always or almost of yourself that you have to let go mm. Uh, and I hold on to that for quite some time. That, but I am this this person. I have been in in the, in the lab for many years. I have been in this field. I have my PhD. I have done a lot of uh, research and work around this and all the articles that I have published. <laughs> yeah, all the articles. Yeah. Everything now was yeah. this just what will it just be a waste of my time? I think you always you you end up in those types of 
Okay. Yeah, you end up in these thoughts, you know. So you decided to do a PhD for a reason. We, we can come back to that. Yeah. But then with the time, you actually realize that, hmm, this might not give me the energy I expected. Yeah. So could it be so that you had an idea about research and science when you started your PhD yeah. and then you came to reality that it's actually in the lab, it's a lot of routine work. Yeah. And that yeah. maybe was not really your thing. Yeah. Could that be something that, well, because what was your idea about science before you started it, to do science? <clears throat> I, I, I think... Yeah, a lot more creative. You you see all those pictures, and uh, it looks so 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 very in, in uh, for me. I, I don't know. I think I just pictured it. I I perhaps did my own picture where mm. it's like very creative. The labs are like open, and it's you know it's uh, different colors, and it's all those. Uh, fancy machines and you're running around and you're helping each other and it's like um perhaps a bit uh, other uh, environment i picture from the beginning i don't know or maybe i didn't even really no but i think you picture very well i get you know this is what i hear from my clients i thought science was i saw the professor on stage and they were traveling and these exciting um pictures as you said i read books and then i came into the lab and I was just sitting doing a lot of experiments, the same experiments every day. And I said, yeah, you know, that's the hard work behind yeah. the results. Yeah. You, know? yes. you have to do that to, to, to get the beautiful pictures. Yeah. And, and this is, again, because now you work as a recruiter. You, you obviously mm -hmm. learn that you are not a routine person. I can hear yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know that at the yeah. time. Yeah. Science for you was a creative thing in your brain. And you can be, you know, I can be here and I can do that. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you were sitting pipetting. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is here now, though, you must, plenty, you must have plenty of people coming to you when they look for a job and they feel the same thing. But they can't put words on it. Yeah. Is this where you can help your clients or help your prospects, if I put it that, in the recruitment business? Yes, uh, I, I hope so. And, and uh, that definitely happens uh, a lot of the time uh, mm -hmm. because I, I think it's we need to do a little research ourselves here, like what, mm -hmm. what, what is out there mm -hmm. uh, and how... Where will where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? And of course, if you, I know that for myself. In in those when you are have those thoughts and you don't really know, it's also very difficult to sell yourself to yeah, position. Yeah, mm. uh, so that's a bit crucial, I think. And when I came to that point, I realized it was very very uh, easy. I can tell a little bit about that story. Yeah, please. please. <laughs> So yeah, please. When I realized that, okay, I want to be in life science because I think it's such an interesting and uh, just, yeah, the, the area overall and, and the, the feel. And I don't want to leave that, but I want to meet people. I want to, to, to be able to help. To be able to help people has also been something that I always wanted to. Uh, to do in one way or another so and be more creative and and be able to, to be flexible and have multiple different of tasks so i don't get bored one day i will do this perhaps it's going to to an, an event and meet up with people the other day maybe i'm sitting to have interviews and meeting people that way and another day maybe go to to an, an, a company that we collaborate with meeting people there so it's yeah it's a lot about meeting people i did understand that okay something here in me is it's I'm a people person. <laughs> yeah, you are a people person. It's very clear. And, and and I have a vague feeling of that you like to help and support people yeah, as well. And, yeah. yeah, and I have always done that, I think, since I was a kid. It's like my friends or, or also, you know, family. And can I help you? Or you have those thoughts and feelings. Can we, let's sit down and, and have a chat. And I think it's interesting to hear. And how can I help? And and is there something I can do here? Mm -hmm. um, so when I defended my, my PhD last year, it's actually about uh, yeah one one month or one year ago in September last year, 
um, I was pretty clear on that I wanted to move forward uh, and move from from the academia uh, and to a, a position in a company where I felt both that my skills um, and also perhaps having you know the right the values that I uh, also um, have um, that those this was were met at at the yeah, your values in were included in the in the next step in your yes. career. So, but what are your values? Yeah. Um, so for me, I think it's it's very important to be able to to be myself. Uh, I have felt that I haven't always been able to be that. Mm. I think I have. Um, well, ac- academia, you have to have some sort of uh, 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 not. Uh, facade but uh, you're supposed to be professional and present your 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 data in a certain way and I like to be a little bit fun and goofy sometimes and I think I were that and it was often uh, appreciated but I, I don't think I couldn't be it like Way out. Uh, put it this way what I can hear between the lines here is that you like to have fun in the job and show your, yeah. your sort of yeah. that you are a playful woman that is what I can yeah. see you like to laugh and uh, you know this is what I also hear from many clients that you know they find academia a little bit serious yeah, yeah? Uh, it's maybe maybe because it's a different type of people may be attracted uh, yeah. uh, in academia it doesn't have to be so but it can be the department you were at for example yeah. and that is something I share with you I came to organic chemistry in Lund and these people were extremely serious and I was like you running in the corridor laughing so yeah. I was completely odd bird uh, among these people here. yeah and, and this is what we talk about what kind of people would you like to surround yourself yeah. with what kind of work style would you like to have these things are extremely important when you plan your next step in your yeah, career absolutely. and that you're clear over that I'm going to ask you something I hear often here Mm. and see if you felt the same. That is that when you come directly from academia, you feel sort of as a failure when you decide not to stay and you feel that um, it's hard for you to say that I want to leave. It's an active step. I don't fit in. I don't want to pursue an academic career. Did you feel the same thing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, for for many years i think and that that was perhaps also why i um held on so strong to the idea i think uh, maybe if i just had realized it even sooner maybe i hadn't have even started the phd or maybe i have had ended it before i i finished it but i'm very happy in one way that i you know Mm -hmm. uh made it through to the end um but i i felt for sure that that this is a failure uh and i i had also another kind of and and my second plan was to move into maybe uh the industry in very like high r&d positions and 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 so uh, but i realized that that's not probably right for me either because it's it's a lot of, of the same thing, but here it's, I'm, it's also more ad, administrative, and I'm not that kind of person e- e- either. So, um, but but I felt like a failure for not choosing those two. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I want you listeners here to listen yeah. to what Sarah says because this is really important. I want to emphasize that again that a scientist there are many scientist types, <clears throat> and and as being a scientist. You know, like you said, in R and D, because that that is to pursue a career very similar. It's different in industry, mm-hmm. of course, but very similar to what you did uh, in the lab in, in academia. But there are other alter, you know, there are really many other mm-hmm. career tracks mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. can take where you go into business or you start a company. You are in business. You're in people business. You are in human resource here, Sarah, mm-hmm. and that is a career that many PhDs don't think of because yeah. it is sort of if I take that career step, if I if I choose that step, then I have done everything for nothing. Yeah. That's the one something what I hear. So 
what argument would you use that if you choose to go to human resource as a PhD, because that is basically what you do Mm -hmm. here, human resource, why isn't a PhD a waste? Mm. Um, Because we we learn so much, gather so much knowledge. Uh, I I don't think I I wouldn't have... um, come to this position and this this place and this company if I didn't have my background mm. uh, with my PhD uh, and all the knowledge about the industry and everything that I have that I have learned from from here mm. um, so it's uh, it's absolutely not uh, it will always be something that you can use and uh, you will always be you. You will always have the skills and everything that you have learned from there. Uh, and you will use that wherever, in what in whatever direction, direction you are, are moving towards. And I think it's also very, it's very brave. Uh, and it's not, I, I, I would like to, to say that, that, um, that it's not many people perhaps that dare to do this. And I, and because we are so we don't want to make other people disappointed we don't want to make ourselves disappointed we don't want to to leave what feels safe Mm. so i i I know that i heard when i told that yeah but i'm moving into recruitment and then i got the comments from from my some of my colleagues and phd fellows that oh so you don't want to do a career Mm. and that yeah, that, that hurt, hurt it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I just felt that. Uh, I think my response were that you can do careers in many possible ways, mm. uh, and my way of doing career is that I want to have fun and I want to do what lights me up and makes mm. me happy. And that's the best career choice for me. Yeah, there you go. There you have your values. Yeah, you want to be happy in your job. Yeah, so what you are saying here is really that it's important to take your own choices and and don't be dependent on what other people say about you or think Mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's people's opinions. Yeah, And it's very common. You have to think about the consequence. Am I living the life I want, do I choose the careers I want or what yeah. other people think I should do? Yeah. And remember that if you choose a career because other people say that this is what you should do, think about what will happen with you if you continue with that for 20 years. Yeah. What will happen mm-hmm. with you? It will be a disaster, of course. Mm-hmm. So we need a shield. That is what yeah. I hear, Sarah. We yeah. need a shield yeah. where we can say, do you know what? Thank you for your comment. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my career in life. So is that okay for you if yeah. I'm happy with it? You know, because yeah. you have a choice. You can do what you want yeah. in your life. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thea, sir. I think this is, and almost want to end with that one because that one is so important. Mm. But what I want to come back to just a little bit is because you touched it several times is that it is important to take a step back to understand what the job really is about yeah. because this when you choose once upon a time your phd you had an idealistic idea yeah. what it was so you started and then you learned and you did a brave thing then to stop no this is not the right thing and then you took a, a next step so how did you learn at empire that this might be the right fit for you what did you do to figure that out mm-hmm. So I I think one thing is that Empire has been very good to to market themselves. So I actually, I think two years before I I started here, I started to follow uh, a colleague on on LinkedIn and I saw Talent Advisor uh, and I thought, like in life science industry, and I thought that sounds very interesting. I will will keep that in mind. So some Thing even there two years before I saw something and they were posting interesting things so and and really um, branding themselves of course in an, in an, uh, in a way that made me very interested uh, in, in what the company is doing about their values and so but I didn't know so much it was just like a little little thought so I didn't know so much about them but then the week before I um 
defended my thesis, I, they actually had an ad for a talent advisor at Empire Science Tech. And the first sentence in that, it were, uh, do you have experience from the lab, but you want to you wanna work with people? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that was a hot spot for yeah. you. Yeah, you funny, can read. <laughs> the funny thing is that I thought that it stood, uh, that, it, that I could read or that it stood, are you tired of being in the lab and yeah. want to work with people? So I thought that for many months, even after I started, so I had to go into the, the ad and see that it didn't say, are you tired of being in the lab? It's, it's the, do you have experience from being in the lab? So I totally, you know, read it very fast and okay, this, this is so, but here I could read all of the things that I have been looking for and yeah. um, with uh, basically being a very people uh, people yeah. oriented yeah, person people oriented. You know, you know, yes. the job ad spoke to you it was yeah, like it a harry like potter mail and was just yes. screaming apply you will, sarah apply you will, you will meet <laughs> yeah meet people you will meet people and you will meet people, you will meet uh, people. And, and it was just and also of course the values so mm. one of the our core va- values are be who you are mm. uh, and since my value is i want to be be able to be myself that's yeah it was the same value Mm -hmm. so i felt like okay it's both they both have my my values uh and and they have and i have the skills that they are looking for and they have the job that i want to have so, so. <laughs> yes it was a perfect fit <laughs> well of course you sign a contract like that so yeah. sarah i think we're going to end that was an absolute beautiful end from you sarah so dear listeners you know listen to sarah here you know you get it all back so it is important to actually understand the job ad and yeah. to know yourself here so with that said sarah thank you a lot for for this podcast and the interview here it was an absolutely fantastic and amazing mm, thank you so talking much with you here. so nice being here with you yeah. So with that said, I would say to all dear followers that this is Tina from PhD Career Stories and we are publishing now two episodes per month and you can read more about us on our website phdcareerstories.com you can follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and never hesitate to reach out to us if you have a person you like us to interview or anyone that like to record you think you have something you like to share with the world because we are a global podcast and we love to help and inspire people so thank you for listening to us have a wonderful and lovely day Thank you.